Hello everyone and welcome back to the CLSR and I'm your host the counselor and today we're going to be talking about how we're going to cope with these online predators. See online specifically is something that we're going to address here today because there's too much information going through that internet. There's too much access. There's too much control and there's too much abuse occurring through that online portal that we have. And basically, that's exactly what it is. It's a portal for everyone to see. Even when you think people aren't watching, they're watching you. If you have your laptop open and your camera, there are people who can spy on there. There are people who can hack into your computer and watch everything you do. If you have a home security system, they can watch you. Believe it or not, if you have cameras installed inside your house, they could watch you. In all these areas, they can get in. And they don't even need to be hackers. See, the computer could show them how to do everything. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we can deal with these online predators. See, online predators are an unfortunate part of our life, especially in this digital world. They may be seeking to do you some harm or to steal from you, but their practices are the same. Online predators contact you through the Internet and attempt to establish a relationship. And I said it, a relationship in order to get you to provide them with information they need to take advantage of you. It's important that if you think you are dealing with an online predator, you let your parents know immediately. We kind of want you to recognize suspicious requests or behavior. It may not always be easy to know that you are interacting with someone that has bad intentions. One way to keep yourself safe is to keep a lookout for common signs that the person you are interacting with is an online predator. If someone you interact with online demonstrates behavior that is in keeping with that of a predator, consider cutting off communication with them. If someone repeatedly asks you to Skype with them or communicate via webcam, they may be an online predator. Never send pictures or videos to anyone you are uncomfortable sending them to. If someone you speak to gets angry with you because you were unable to be online, that can be a sign that you are dealing with an online predator. If someone you are speaking to repeatedly brings up sex or sexually related material, that is also a sign that you are dealing with a predator online, right? Oh, send me some pictures of you. Be careful with that. Some of them have these really terrible intentions. You should not be sending any of your pictures to anyone, period, online, especially nude pictures or anything like that. That is a serious problem. Look for signs that your child is being targeted by an online predator. See, children are very vulnerable. Children are often targeted by online predators for a variety of reasons. Identify if your child is being targeted by a predator by keeping an eye on their internet usage and their behavior. If your child demonstrates any of these symptoms I'm going to talk to you about, they could be at risk, right? Like, for example, if your child suddenly becomes secretive about their online activities, it may be as a result of their interactions with an online predator. Or if your child receives gifts in the mail from someone you do not know or receives phone calls from people you are unfamiliar with, they may be interacting with the predator. If your child becomes increasingly withdrawn from personal relationships and gets angry when they can't gain access to the internet, that is also a sign that they may be interacting with the predator. Block the person from contacting you. Depending on how you have been communicating with an online predator, you may be able to easily block them from contacting you again. If you don't see a way to block the person readily, look in the help section of the software or social media site. See, on Facebook, you can go to their profile and click on where it says you are friends to view options that include blocking the person. You can block email contacts in Gmail by clicking on the contact and then choosing to block new messages from them. See, most chat sites allow you to add users to an ignore list that prevents their messages from reaching you. Change your screen names.
If you aren't able to block the person on the social media platform you are using, you may need to change your screen name to avoid having them contact you again. Don't use your real name in your screen name. To make it more difficult, you have to make it difficult for them to find you, period. So don't use your name. Do not include things like your age or date of birth in your screen name to let people know how old you are, right? And you might have to even go so far as to contact the administrators of the website or forum. If a predator continues to find ways to contact you after changing you your screen name and blocking them, try contacting the people that run the web page you are on and asking them if they can assist. Many forums have moderators that can help you prevent someone from contacting you. See, websites like reddit.com and most forums have moderators that make sure inappropriate material is taken down and people who don't follow the rules are banned. Even websites without moderators may be able to provide you with helping blocking someone or preventing them from reaching you again. As a parent or supervisor, you may have to take some action on behalf of your child. If you have reason to believe that your child is interacting with an online predator, you may need to take matters into your own hands to prevent them from continuing to interact. If you worry that your child may be interacting with an online predator, speak to them about it. Limit their access to websites or applications that may allow them to communicate with people you deem to be too risky. Monitor your child's internet usage and check their phones on a regular basis. Inform your child about the types of things that they should look out for when dealing with people online to avoid these predators. Um, there are situations where, you know, you might have to take some legal action. You got to tell your parents. The first thing you need to do when dealing with an online predator is tell your parents what's going on. Be honest with them about how you met the predator and what has happened since so that they can help you and make sure you're safe. Tell your parents everything about your interactions with an online predator. Do not leave information out because you are embarrassed. It's always better to be safe than it is to save face. I'm telling you that you may have to save your conversations with the predator. Once you begin to suspect someone you interact with is an online predator, save copies of your conversation with them to be able to show law enforcement when filing a report. Do not delete emails or messages that are automatically saved in your social media accounts. Save copies of conversations in other applications that do not store them by copying and pasting them into a Word document. Right, click on that mouse, get highlight that text, click copy, and then open that Word document and click right click paste. That's as simple as it could be. If you have to contact the police, then you're going to have to do that. If you are unable to cut communications with an online predator by blocking them and changing your screen name, it may be time to contact those police officers. There are law enforcement officials that specialize in dealing with online predators that will be able to help. That's a part of some divisions, most divisions. Bring your saved conversations with you to the police station so that they have everything and you can provide them with information, text, videos, pictures, anything that can indicate you're being harassed and being um stalked by an online predator. Become completely honest with the police. They will need to be able to put together a case against the online predator. And if you lie to them, it will make it much worse for everyone involved. And it's far more difficult for them to press charges as soon as you lie. So you don't want to lie. Keep it up front, be genuine, and be honest. Cooperate with the police investigation. The police may ask you some questions that you are embarrassed to answer about your interactions. You know, if you've been doing some things you weren't supposed to be doing and you know what it is, it could be quite embarrassing. If you're pulling your pants down or taking naked pictures or sending them, I love you. Yes, as embarrassing as that may be from the police, you still got to disclose it. Tell them everything because you know what? They might accuse you of many, many things, but too bad. You could say, no, no, 
safety is number one. I've made some mistakes. I'm young. Somebody's stalking me. It's not your fault. It's easy to get dragged in by some of these predators, right? Remember, police officers are professionals and are there to help. If you do not want your parents to be in the room when you discuss your dealings with an online predator with the police, you may ask them to allow you to speak with them alone. Remember that your parents and the police are there to help you and only want to keep you safe. By cooperating with them, you may be able to prevent an online predator from harming you and others as well. Sure, you might feel safe, but think about the impact that that predator is going to have on someone else. You might get wise and feel, oh, I can deal with this person. But if you know that somebody's dealing like that out there, constantly being persistent about getting at you or trying to get your attention, you know they're being reckless in their lives and they have to be dealt with in one way or another. The interactions between you and an online predator may have gone on too long and you might be embarrassed. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to lie to your parents. Online predators will likely ask you to lie to your parents about your relationship with them or about things that they ask you to do. As a rule of thumb, if someone is asking you to lie to your parents, they may not have your best interests in mind. While you don't have to tell your parents about everything in your life, a real friend won't expect you to deceive your parents about the nature of your friendship. Think about it. If they're asking you to lie to your parents, those aren't your friends. They're, you shouldn't be hiding anything from your parents. Your parents got your best interests. You came from them. These predators are quite slick. They may use lies that they convinced you to tell for blackmail later on. They set you up. And yes, we are living in a world of material things, and it's not hard or difficult to see these young people getting caught up with gifts or money. Someone send you a little bit of gift or money. Maybe you ain't got no money or you haven't had gifts in a long term or you never had any gifts. You're going to be more susceptible to getting these gifts. Well, I'm saying no. Don't accept gifts or money. While a friend may be happy to help you out when you are low on cash or give you a gift from time to time, predators will not give you things without expecting something in return, right? Nobody does anything for no reason, especially a complete stranger, right? Don't provide anyone you don't know with your address to mail you gifts or money. These predators could use gifts to blackmail you. Look what I did for you. Now, what are you going to do for me? Blackmail is a big part of their game. It's management by guilt. And this generation of selfies and photos and likes or dislikes, never send someone photos of yourself. If someone asks you to send them pictures of yourself, you should ask yourself why. If they offer to send you a picture in return, it does not necessarily mean they are also your age or even the person in the picture. Never send anyone pictures of yourself that you would be embarrassed to find that they shared with others. Do not send pictures in exchange for pictures of the other person. There is no guarantee that it is really them. And please don't send money to someone you don't know. You may be asked to send money to help a person you don't know that is experiencing difficulties. Or you may be asked to send money in order to free up funds with a guarantee that the money will be returned. Predators requesting money online will likely disappear after you transfer money to them. Never send money to someone because they agree to send you it back with interest or additional funding. This is a common internet scam utilized by these predators. Do not provide personal information to these strangers. I told you, don't do it. Predators may seek to actually harm you, or they may intend to steal from you. Either option requires information about you in order to succeed. Do not give out information about yourself to any strangers online. Do not give your address or telephone number to anyone. Never provide a bank account, credit card, or financial information to anyone you meet online. They're scammers. Trust me. Take steps if you have to, parents, to protect your children. If you are concerned about your children interacting with online predators, you can take steps to increase their awareness of the risks as well as others to help you protect them. 
monitor your children's web usage to ensure that they do not interact with people that they shouldn't. Utilize privacy settings and parental controls on computers, tablets, smartphones, just to limit access to websites that could introduce your children to predators. Place the computer in a common area so your children lack privacy when surfacing the web. This will make them less likely to access sites that may be dangerous, right? Or off limits. Be aware of the warning signs. Learn common traits of predators. Many online predators are looking to sexually exploit children or teens. They may be pedophiles or child molesters. There are many characteristics that are typical of predators. Like, generally pedophiles are outgoing and engaging. Not all people who are outgoing and engaging are pedophiles, but some are. If you meet someone online who seems overly friendly, be cautious. Child molesters actively target their prey. They might use the internet to seek out a child they know from the neighborhood, work, or school. Be aware that online predators can be complete strangers or someone you actually know. Understand grooming. Grooming is the process that the predator uses to gain a child's trust. Grooming can happen over a relatively short period of time, such as one conversation. It can also occur over a longer stretch, like a couple of weeks or even months. A predator can try to gain the trust of anyone. They can try to ask for information about the child. A predator is typically an adult. During the initial interactions, they might lie about their age in order to gain trust. If a predator learns that you play soccer, for instance, they might say, where do you play? I play every weekend. Which team are you on? They will agree with you, but may not know the details of the topic. So ask them about details of what they claim is true. Be wary of requests to meet. When you are unsure who you are dealing with online, there are several specific things to look out for. Being aware of warning signs can help keep you and your family safe, right? After initial grooming period, many online predators will ask for an in-person meeting. This is a red flag. If someone says, I really need to meet you in person, be aware that they could be a predator. Be especially cautious if they are repeating their requests. If someone tries to insist on meeting you, you need to question their motives. Just tell them straight up. Let them know. Say, look, I enjoy chatting online about school, but it's making me uncomfortable that you are pressuring me to meet. Would you mind cooling it or stopping it? I'm not comfortable with this conversation. Watch out for flattery. Online predators usually try flattery, emotional manipulation on their prey. They may offer compliments as a way to gain favor. Be careful now. If you have pictures of yourself online, a predator might comment on how your appearance is in a creepy way. Make sure that only friends you know and trust can view your photos. Consider it a warning sign if someone says something like, you're so pretty, I can get you a modeling contract. Identify the suspicious behavior. Any statement that can be perceived as a threat is another warning sign. An online predator might try to scare a person into doing what they want. If someone threatens you, exit the site or chat room immediately. A threat could be something like, don't tell your parents you've been talking to me. I'll find out. A predator could also threaten you by saying, if you don't meet me, I'll tell your friends your secrets. Right? A request for personal information is also suspicious. Don't give out any of that. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. Look for changes in your child's behavior. If you have a child that, you know, they were acting one way and all of a sudden they're just done a 360. You know, maybe you are concerned that your child is being targeted by an online predator. There are several warning signs you could look for. Think about whether your child is secretive, as I mentioned seems obsessed with being online, tries to hide the screen from view when you enter the room, 
receive calls or texts from someone you don't even know or downloads pornography or makes their pornography for the predator, right? How do you handle these suspicions? Well, as a parent, you're going to have to talk with your child, as I mentioned. It's something that you have to do. If you're worried that your child is interacting with a predator, your first step is to talk to them. Make it clear you are worried. Not angry. Ask your child questions to determine what is going on. Could say, being online seems like it is really controlling your mood lately. Is there a reason for that? As well, I'm concerned about your safety. Let's go over the ground rules for staying safe online. Mind your child that they can trust you. Explain that you are just looking out for the best interest. And make sure your child knows the warning signs of a predator. They also need to know never to share personal information. Check your computer. I'm serious. Go through that computer. Ask your child for the password. If they don't give it to you, take that computer away. Say, no, I don't have time for these games. And check your computer. If you suspect that an online predator is targeting someone in your home, you can check your computer. Make sure that you have security software installed. This can help protect your computer from spyware and viruses. Run a security scan to see if any programs have been added to your computer without your knowledge. Check for suspicious downloads. Look to see if there is anything concerning new material on your computer, such as pornography. Make sure to regulate, inspect, all the computers in your house. Don't forget, laptops, tablets. Oh, yeah. No, no. Get hold of them. Contact the Cyber Tip Line. This is a resource mandated by Congress in the United States, right? If you live there, you can contact this tip line 24 hours a day. And if you have to, go to the website, www cybertipline.com. You can also call 1-800-843-5678. Check the sex offender registry. I've said that before, but do it. Many online predators have been convicted of sexual offense. They can't help themselves. They don't know how to stop themselves. So you got to stop them. But you got to stop them by stopping your child. Right, The sex offender registry is public information. Check your area to see if a potential sexual predator lives in your community. Family Watchdog is a site that allows parents to check their area for registered sex offenders. Enter the address, right, your address, into the spaces to determine if anyone in your area is registered. You should also check the address for your child's school and other frequently visited areas. Contact the authorities if you or someone you know is concerned that you are being targeted by an online predator. You should report it. Contact the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children to make a report. You can reach the agency at 1-800-THE-MISSING. You can also contact the Federal Bureau of Investigations. In Canada, it's called CSIS. If you are concerned about immediate danger, contact your local police department. Ask for an officer to come to your house to make a report. You have to stay offline once things get in motion. Set your boundaries, people. If you have a child or teen that is regularly online, you have to make sure that you follow some basic safety guidelines. Set clear rules for your child's online activities. Then clearly communicate these boundaries to your teen. Make a no-delete rule. Tell your child not to clear any of the search history or cache from time to time. You're going to have to check to see what they've been looking at. Set a time limit. For example, allow your child to be online in the evening, but make sure they disconnect by 9 p.m. Be aware of who their friends are. Make sure your team can clearly explain who they are interacting with. And if they start tripping out, acting a fool, that means that's time for you to get someone else involved because they're not listening. You need some support. Purchase that safety software. Sometimes boundaries aren't enough. You can use technology to help your family members be safe. Consider purchasing security software to install on all family computers. These programs can send alerts when someone tries to access questionable sites, Safety software can also record all online activity so you can tell with certainty which sites your child has visited. Some programs can also prevent new windows from opening. 
This can help keep you and your family from accidentally stumbling into dangerous territory. Guard your privacy. Make certain that everyone in your household knows how to protect personal information. Hold a family meeting and talk about specific information that should never be shared online. Caution family members against sharing your address, number, email, location of schools, any details or physical appearance. Avoid chat rooms. One of the best ways to stay safe is to avoid going into a private chat room. If someone asks you or your child to leave the group chat, consider this a warning. Inappropriate comments are most often made in private rooms. Leave a chat immediately if you feel uncomfortable. Teach your family members to do the same. If asked to go in a private chat, you can say, no, thank you. I'm cool hanging out here with the group, right? And listen to your instincts. This is something I am very, very big on. Follow your instincts. Go with your gut feeling. If someone feels off, you need to do something or say something. If your instincts tell you that you are dealing with a predator, cut off contact immediately. Tell your parents or a friend about your suspicions. This is good advice for parents too. If your instincts tell you that your child is dealing with a predator, don't ignore the feeling. Talk with your child immediately and investigate your suspicions on what may be going on. This is going to take some work, people. You got to be brave. You got to stand up and you're going to have to be flexible in the sense that you're going to have to be able to take your time, be patient, observe, talk to your child, make sure that you're taking some moves that are proactive. Don't just ignore the situation. Know that once you get little signs, little things lead to big things. I don't care what people tell you. These little things add up. You get a child that's doing little things, fighting too much, stealing when they're little, and you think, oh, they're just young. Be careful. It always leads to something bigger, always, in some sort of way. You might not be aware of it, but little things lead to big things, so we can't afford to look the other way. If you see your child getting into a depression, kind of look at their internet usage. Should you cut that off? Maybe you should altogether. They might go into a frenzy, into a fit. You're going to have to look into this. But a lot of parents are afraid to take those moves, to take that out of the kid's hand because a lot of them were raised with that computer in their hand. That's all they know. To them, it's like breathing. Well, I'm sorry. You're going to have to fight for your rights and for the rights of your child. And sometimes that involves putting your foot down, setting your boundaries, saying no, and sticking with it. How many of you said yes, right? Then you turn around, then you say no, and then you flip-flop back again. Too many of you, you got to have some backbone. And that's what I'm always advocating for, sticking to it. No, they don't have to like it, and they're not going to like it. See, a lot of us are uncomfortable, right? We're uncomfortable when our children lash at us. We have to learn to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. That's what you have to do. You got to realize that the bigger picture, what's the bigger picture? Their safety or just listening to ramble on making you feel like a bad person because they are going to react and respond. Some might even get aggressive, but I'll tell you right now, you might even feel bad if you have a kid who's got this computer in your mind because to me, it's like this media thing. It's like a form of hypnosis. It gets in the mind and they can't get it all. It's almost like you can't live without it. So remember, if you're trying to cut that off, some of them will lash out. And you might feel guilty in the end because you tried to take it away. And they're like, you're over-exaggerating. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, until you clarify and get your evidence and, you know, compare it to reality, uh-uh, it's a no-go. I said no and stick with it. And if you can't do it by yourself, get some support. So I'm having some difficulties here. This kid's lashing up. If your kid gets physical, you're going to have to take matters into your hand. You can't never let your child put their hands on you. That's the worst thing you could do. I've seen some kids act a fool. I've seen them lash out at their parents trying to tell them what to do. And they know, oh, you know what? They can't tell me what to do or I'll complain on them. I'll call children's aid. I'll do something. They're going to pull it all out, people. They're going to go after it. They're going to make sure that they get their way and their needs met. And if that means running you over, that's what they're going to try to do. So if you ain't strong enough, admit it, own it. Say, you know what? I don't know about this kid. This kid's wild. This kid is a wonderful person. But when it comes to their media, you can't mess with their media, right? They might want to fist fight you. 
But you know what? You got to get someone else involved, especially when you know you got to break the news. Get a brother, get an uncle, get a family member, get an aunt, you know, a grandmother and sit down with them so that they can witness what's going on. But when you have to lay it down, you're going to have to lay it down. It's not going to be pretty. And like I said, the guilt will come in. But you know, you can't question yourself. You know about the bigger picture. You know what could go wrong. You know that that kid... You know, it's going to be too late when you kick yourself later. There won't be no later if you don't stand up, right? There possibly may not be. That person, that predator that's online has got a lot of influence. And see, through practice, they master their tricks. They master how to get at your children. And through time, they perfect their moves and their motives. And they're so good at it. You are just going to be blown away if you even knew what they're up to. And you can't be. You got a life to live, but you got to try to get control of the situation and be aware and constantly check every once in a while of what's going on, making sure things are in check. Watch your children, watch the online, watch the access and be aware that they're out there. Well, good conversation today. Um, Great information. I think it's useful and I want you to be like the wise old bird and spread the word. And this subject that I'm bringing up is very crucial because I could feel we're going into a second lockdown. And there are a number of people at home who used to be at work. And so now they're sitting at home. Some of them are brewing. Some of them aren't getting their needs met. So they're going to use that computer to work twice as hard. Well, we have to be twice as diligent. Sadly, we live in a world of online predators. And if you don't want your family to be victim to it, you're going to have to take some action. You're going to have to be brave and you're going to have to be clear in your communication and aware. Thank you. Take care.